CSS that works with JavaScript in mind. And after this talk, I want all of you to uh, try everything at home, to create your own experience uh, with CSS Paint API. Uh, before we start, a few words about me. So I'm Vitaly, I'm living in Poland now. Originally, I'm Ukrainian. I'm co-organizing Angular Wroclaw Meetup. And I love CSS because CSS is awesome. And hopefully, with power of Houdini, it will be much more uh, powerful and awesomeness will be full of rainbows. <laughs> so yeah, what is Houdini project? And usually people might imagine this serious man. But he did a lot of magic in 19th century. And I think it was the idea why they call this project Houdini, because it's been magic. So Houdini is just a name of a bunch of APIs that used to extend CSS engine uh, features and bring new one as well. And Paint API is only one piece of the whole picture. It's one of high-level APIs that could be used to draw images on elements. We will look at it later. Why we need Houdini? On one side, we have us developers. We want some new CSS features to be available in browsers. On the other side, we have browsers that want to implement feature after it will be used by developers. So it's like cycular dependency. And everybody's sitting and waiting for something. It takes so long time to get some features like position sticky. It was announced, I think, in 28 or something. But we get it partially, not in all browsers yet. So what is CSS engine internals? We have this rendering pipeline. Our CSS parse, uh, they create a CSS object model, then uh, apply cascade rules, and we have three stages of uh, layout creation. Actually, layout, that means where we place our elements, then paint them, and composite. We adjust layers uh, above each other to get the uh, picture for user. And what uh, good with Houdini that it applies APIs directly on these stages. We can polyfill some CSS features, at least we can try, uh, but they are too slow because in JavaScript we need to write a lot of JavaScript logic and uh, it uh, uh, has a big size of JavaScript code that should be parsed, downloaded, and so on. There too big, as I said, and they're incorrect because we need to handle all cascade rules, all changes on resize of element, resize of viewport, and a lot of other conditions to handle. And we need to reflect partial implementation of what CSS engine does inside. On the other hand, we can compile time polyfill stuff with post-CSS, which is a project that actually like Babel, but for CSS. The only thing uh, post-CSS core does, it just builds abstract syntax tree of your CSS and applies plugins to it. But it's not dynamic. We can change something in runtime as we want. So we have this rendering pipeline and Almost for every stage of this pipeline, Houdini provides some proposals of APIs. CSS parsing API, type at OM, that means that we have types come from CSS engine for us. Internally, uh, CSS engine parses all strings and trying to recognize which type we want to use, uh, validate it, invalidate, and so on. And <coughs> CSS Paint API is actually applying on Paint stage, and it allows us to draw uh, canvas images for elements that are 
could be used with images. And uh, all these APIs, uh, like CSS uh, layout, animation worklet, and CSS paint, they are uh, together with uh, worklets uh, API. So what is worklet? Worklet is basic infrastructure needed for these high-level APIs. It's slightly different from web workers. So it's also separate, completely separate JavaScript con context that uh, could be executed on another thread that makes a lot of performance reasons. And it has limitations uh, by functionality available. Um, especially for Paint API, you're not allowed to use almost all asynchronous APIs, like asynchronous imports, timeouts, and all this stuff. So it's basic class to establish uh, Paint worklet, layout, and so on. So what is Paint API? What it brings for us? It allows you to draw image for any property that expects this image, like background image, border image, list uh, image, or your own custom property that has type image. We will see about these uh, types later. So how to use CSS Paint? We can just define a special function called Paint and pass in the name of our paint worklet that we should create. And that's it. And we can apply this value for background image, for example. What about support in browsers right now? So I can say that Paint API is one of the most uh, stable uh, proposals uh, for Houdini. It stages as candidate recommendation now. And it is implemented in Chrome, starting from version 65 uh, that was released this much. And definitely it comes to all Blink-based browsers like Opera. And other browsers are also interested to implement it. But before that, they need to set up this basic infrastructure like type 2 m worklets, and so on. And then, for them, it will be much more easier way to implement because they can follow implementation of Chrome. And you can check the current status of all Houdini APIs uh, by this resource. Uh, is Houdini re ready yet? So as any CSS property, it is easily to fall back. If browser don't uh, have no idea about paint function, it will just ignore it. So we can provide fallback with image or solid color if you want. Also, there is polyfill created by Jason Miller. He is the creator of Preact. Uh, it allows you to create uh, Paint API's uh, worklets uh, right now, and it creates canvas element for you and draw everything on canvas element in DOM. Uh, so how we can create custom paint? There are just three main steps that we need to perform. The number one, we need to declare custom paint class in separate file, and it should follow special uh, interface. The second one, we will register this class and give the name for our paint worklet. And the last one, we need to load our worklet uh, to get CSS engine know about it. So it will apply rules for it and do all uh, dirty work for us. So how it looks like. So we can create separate file and we need to create separate file for security reasons. It's not allowed to create inline code for worklets because they can't share the context with main UI thread. And it should implement paint method. In this method, browser for you passes context that actually 2D uh, canvas context with some limitations. A geometry ob uh, object that contains actual size of our element, width and height, uh, and optional parameters, properties, and arguments. We will see it later. So then, inside this file, we have special 
function called register paint. And first argument the name of our paint that will be used inside our style sheets. The second argument, just our class. It could be anonymous inline class or named one and imported by reference. And the last thing, in our main UI code, it could be line script or our bundle, we need to add our worklet module, this file. So we have uh, paint worklet object on top of uh, CSS global. And we have function called add module that actually fetches the script and applies rules. And we can feature detect if paint worklet already available for us by just checking if paint worklet is available on CSS object. And that's it. That was fine, but it, the CSS paint API is visual feature, so we need to see something. And I want to remember you that I want you to try it at home. So how could look like something like hello world CSS paint worklet. So we define a class, uh, in this case, circles painter, and we have paint method with context and geometry. This is the size of our element. And we can draw some circles, uh, rectangles, so on. Uh, it has usual um, methods of uh, canvas, like uh, uh, draw rectangle, fill, and so on. Then we register it and call it circles. Uh, yeah, we can uh, do double loop and draw four circles in this case. In CSS, we define that we want to apply paint called circles to our background. And as a fallback value, we uh, want black color. So let me show how it looks like. So yeah, we have these circles, and inside render method, I added just cancel log to see uh, because when we well, uh, what? <laughs> <coughs> yeah, my daughter watching cartoons on this laptop. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're watching it together. So when I try to resize the viewport, the size of element itself changed, and paint worklet called for me by CSS engine automatically, and it passes actual dimensions of element itself. That was the first, the easiest one, but we can uh, subscribe to changes of some properties. In this example, I subscribe to custom properties, but it could be any CSS property like margin, padding, and so on. So we need, to, inside our painter class, we need to define static method called input properties. And it should return the list of our uh, properties that we are interested for. And if any of these properties change their value, a uh, render method will be called for us. And we can access properties inside the render method by passing properties uh, argument. And uh, properties uh, are just map, of read-only map of properties we are interested in. So we can parse them, provide some defaults, and so on. And now we again using paint called circles, but we also define custom properties. And let me show how it works. So we have, uh, I created simple script to update uh, properties with uh, uh, these range sliders. So on each property change, it changed actually the rendered image. Okay, but we have another possibility that's more close to CSS uh, 
functions, for example, like uh, uh, linear gradient. When you call in this function, you can pass a bunch of arguments to specify colors and color stops values. And we can do something similar for our custom painter. So instead uh, input uh, properties, we need to define static method called input arguments. And instead of uh, providing list of properties, we need to provide list of types. And this is actually types what parsed by CSS engine for you. It's, and they will be validated and uh, strictly typed. And if uh, the type of provided value is incorrect, a browser will ignore it. So in our case, I just converted these custom properties to arguments uh, that should be of type number, number, and percentage. Then inside our render method, we have access to these arguments. It's the list of strings, so we can parse it and use. In CSS, now it looks like this. We have our paint function, passing the name of painter, and then our arguments, separated by comma. And it also works like previous example. So instead of uh, sliders, now I have uh, arguments passed to function, and I can update it. And again, on change of any argument, our render method called for us. This was basic examples how we can use it. And uh, the last static property that we have, context options. And now it has only one uh, context option called alpha. So if we don't care uh, about opacity of our background, we can turn uh, off alpha channel and browser will be perform our painter more performant because it need to recalculate less uh, uh, values for us. It was examples just to show the API and how to use it. So let's show something more interesting. Uh, some of the demos I will show uh, requires flag Chrome, because I'm using other APIs like properties and values that's not available without flag. So first of all, we can create some uh, generative backgrounds. And these backgrounds could uh, be dependent on the size of element. Not the size of view viewport only, but the size of element itself. And we can provide different uh, colors, for example, or different amount of details of our image, depending on size of the element. And they are responsive by default. So we can generate some patterns, for example. And again, on every resize, it regenerates patterns. We can switch values, provide another palette, for example. and. For my personal blog, I'm using material design uh, background that I created as a painter as well. And what I did, I just tried to compare the images and CSS paint. They're not uh, exact equal. Uh, the left side is CSS paint rendered canvas, uh, and the second one is image that I used before. And I have it as fallback till now. So for our CSS Paint API, we have minified file that takes just 800 bytes. Uh, it's not uh, the whole size because we need few bytes to adjust property in CSS and to load worklet in our main. I calculated only minified uh, worklet uh, JavaScript file. And image, it was two kilobytes, compressed GPG, and crop for mobile. I have, I'm using picture element, so I have differently cropped images for different viewport sizes. Uh, 
So I need to, every time, I need to crop uh, images by different sizes myself. Of course, we can't compare directly the size of JavaScript and image, but when we are using so small files, I think it's not that big difference in parsing JavaScript file of that small size. So it's also an interesting exploration because we save network uh, for our users. Also, I created rating, not panda rating. I didn't hear about panda rating before, but usual star rating. So I draw a bunch of stars, and I can fill them by passing rating value. Also, it was easy in Canvas to create different kind of stars with different uh, number of corners. Uh, and it was just few lines of JavaScript code. This is the helper function. I have to draw one star. So I pass in radius uh, and how many corners I want to draw. And it's just a little bit more than 10 lines of code. Next, what I created, it was QR code. Uh, it is possible to synchronously import additional modules inside Paint Workflow. So I find QR module that generates uh, data to render on Canvas and used it. And what I also tried to do but haven't finished yet, I tried to import a WebAssembly compiled library that generates QR codes. And here is a working example of this. So it's, now it should be generated through her JS code. We can change the uh, quality of our QR code, different modes, and it updates it for us. Also, when we change the link itself, it also updated. And you can check it, it should work. It should link you to RuleJS uh, homepage. And it was pretty nice. And I will definitely finish my WebAssembly exploration, especially after these cool talks by guys. I got some ideas how it could be solved. Next, what I created was circle chart. I call it circle because it's two, actually two types of chart in one. Uh, it's donut chart and uh, pie chart. Here is the uh, part of my paint method. So I draw in two arcs, uh, internal one and the out one, and providing values how much uh, to fill our chart. And it looks like this. I have custom properties to define inner radius, outer radius, the value of the chart. I can change the colors. Choose some crazy one. You will definitely not use such colors in production. <laughs> it's too heavy. And it render it and it perform it. And as I said before, we can import some libraries like D3 to create much more richer, uh, richer uh, charts and data visualizations with uh, D3. So it has a lot of uh, useful examples. Then I created bar charts. It's just rectangles and I pass in the amount of uh, values I want. So I can change the side, I can change the distance between bars, but it was just beginning. Then I used JS in CSS concept. You might be wondering, but uh, the example of usages uh, of JavaScript inside CSS are even available inside CSS specifications. So what I did, I created custom property of type of string, and I passed a JSON-like list of values and colors objects. And inside my paint worklet, I just using JSON parse to parse this data from custom property. And here on hover, I just swap in the list of values on. Let me show this map.
No, oh, here is it. So yeah, it looks ugly because not formatted properly in CSS, but it's string that represents the list of values and colors I want to use for this chart. Um, that was all good, but later I want to animate. And when you uh, try to animate uh, CSS variables that actually are custom properties, uh, you might see that they animate it in an ugly way because for browser, they are just strings. So browser have no idea how to animate one string to another string. And it is a problem for us as developers because we need to use some workarounds. For example, we can animate our properties manually with request animation frame and pass it uh, with CSS variables, uh, for example, in our uh, paint worklet. But there is a spec that come of Houdini subset that called CSS properties and values. And what it allows, it allows you to register not just uh, custom property, but custom property with exact type. Internally, as I said before, a CSS engine parses all CSS and recognizes what units and types are using. So we have CSS register property function that uh, accepts uh, configuration object. And this configuration object is straightforward. It's the name of custom property, syntax that means the type. And there is uh, the official list of CSS types available for custom properties. It's not uh, completed yet because they have much more types inside and some helpers to provide lists of uh, uh, types and so on. Also, we can define if we want our custom property to be inherited. And inheritance for custom properties did by DOM. So it's not uh, inherited by CSS cascade, but by uh, DOM object model. And we can optionally pass the initial value for us. And the initial value should be a correct one. In our case, uh, here I want to use percentages. So as initial value, I need to provide some percentage. If I try to register property with initial value like uh, pixels or something, I got the exception in runtime in browser. And for the second level of this specification, they have uh, this great proposal because it's strange to keep registration of custom properties in JavaScript. Usually, we want to keep them together in, uh, in our CSS files. So uh, they have proposal for special add property rule that should uh, pass our custom property name and the same options that we used in JavaScript, like syntax, initial value, and inherit. And I created Prost CSS plugin to transform this proposal CSS uh, to JavaScript files that register or properties with JavaScript. You can use it later in your uh, uh, bundle or uh, load it uh, separately if you want. And how the magic is made. So we can animate this. This one is used uh, with request animation frame as a yeah, so on request animation frame, I parse in this uh, custom property with values map and updating it over the time. I, every time I generate in a random data set to animate because it's just for demo. <laughs> and here is the example with custom property. So I have property called opacity and it is registered as here is it. So we have register property, circles opacity, percentage, inherited false, and initial false 100%. Then we are using it. And we just create a transition. And we can pass custom property 
to transition it with usual CSS uh, transitions. Also, we can use it in animations. But if we will remove this line and reload the page, uh, we, the animation won't be smooth. And that's the case, because they just strings without types defined for CSS engine. There are not so many resources to read about Houdini, and we try to improve this. So they have articles on Google Developers Portal. I created also a bunch of uh, articles about CSS Paint and custom properties, and going to create much more content about uh, Layout API and Animation Worklet. So check it out if you get interested and you want to create something crazy, and feel free to share what experiments you created. Also, there are a lot of demos. All demos I showed are available on my GitHub. You can fork it, play with it, look at code. Also, there are a lot of uh, examples created by community. Definitely check them out. They are really awesome. And remember to try CSS Paint API at home. Thank you very much for listening.